Let's learn how to control servo motor using Arduino. In this lesson, we will look at how servo motor works, then interfacing of servo motor with Arduino, and then later on, we will write a program to precisely control the position of a servo shaft. This video is sponsored by Altium Software. Altium is the PCB design tool I used in my very first job when I was working for a company in Germany. Using Altium gives you two advantages in my opinion. One is that you can really build a professional skills. And the second one is you can not only build a simple small circuit, but you can build a really complex high speed electronic circuit using Altium PCB design. So claim your free trial today with the link in a video description or somewhere in a comment section. And I'm sure you will enjoy working with Altium. Here is how servo motor works. Basically, hobby servo made up of four component. A DC motor, a gearbox, a potentiometer, and a control circuit. As DC motor is of high speed and low torque, it is attached with the gearbox which reduce speed and increase the torque. A servo motor is controlled by sending a series of pulses through signal line. We use PWM signal from a microcontroller to generate these pulses. The frequency of a control signal should be 50 Hz or a pulse should occur every 20 milliseconds. The width of a pulse determines the angular position of the servo. And this type of servo can usually rotate up to 180 degree. When we send a pulse of 1 millisecond duration, which corresponds to 0 degree position, a pulse of 1.5 millisecond will rotate motor to 90 degree position. Further 2 millisecond pulse will move position of a servo to 180 degree. And this is how change in pulse duration helps us rotate servo motor using PWM signal. Now let's interface servo motor with the microcontroller. So you can see the servo motor have three wires. There's a power, ground and a signal. So the red wire which is in VCC will connect to the 5 volt DC of a microcontroller. There's a brown wire which is a ground. Sometimes it will be a black that will connect to the ground pin of a microcontroller. The orange wire from the servo motor will connect to the signal line which is pin number 9 on the microcontroller. So you see I have created a fresh new project with a setup and the loop function which is by default uh, what we get when we create a fresh new Arduino project. So since in our previous lesson what we learn is we are using a servo library from Arduino Uno. So let's add the include statement hash include servo.h header file and then we have to create an object from the servo library from the servo class and to create an object we have to type servo make sure the servo s is capital and then we have to define the object and that is a servo a small letter so the s starts with a small s so that's how we defined the object and in a set of function we then have to specify that which pin that we want to use it uh, to control the servo motor on Arduino Uno and since we are using pin number 9 we will have to say servo small s for servo and then we have to say servo dot attach so attach is the function from the servo library that takes a parameter and this parameter that this function takes is the pin number so we will take pin number 9 because we have connected our position servo to pin number 9 so that's how we will have to specify which pin that we have connected a servo motor to and then in a loop function we will have to write a logic that how we want to rotate the servo because we know this position servo rotate from a 0 degree to 180 degree so we have to type here servo dot write and then we have to specify how much degree that we want to rotate the servo motor so if I pass a parameter 0 then it will rotate a 0 degree position to the servo shaft and then you might get the question like why are we using this servo dot write function okay because you might remember from our previous lesson that by using a PWM signal we can generate a variable duty cycle and we can by varying the duty cycle we can able to rotate the motor right a servo motor and if you still remember from our PWM lesson then we have used a function called analog write function so you might then ask a question like why are we using 
the servo right instead of analog right so technically if you try to understand then the right function the servo dot right function also generates a PWM signal and analog right function also generates a PWM signal but the PWM signal which is generated by right function will use a timer and interrupt which is used into servo dot h header file okay that means into the library and the PWM signal that we generate using this right function will be of the lower frequency so let's say the PWM frequency we require in order to drive the servo motor is a 50 Hertz which is relatively a very small frequency and analog right function generates a full range PWM from 0 to 100 percent and that much pulse width we don't need it operates on a higher frequency so it's better to use this uh, servo dot right function because it is precisely developed keeping in mind that we will be using this right function servo right function to drive the servo motor and that gives us a lot of freedom that's why you can control maximum 12 servos and you are not limited only to uh, use the PWM pin if you use analog right function then you are only limited to the PWM pin but here you can instead of pin number 9 you can connect to pin number 2 pin number 4 any digital pin you can use and generate the PWM signal of a lower frequency that is a 50 Hertz to drive the servo motor I hope this clears the point why we are using the servo right function from the servo dot h library that's basically a standard servo library when we are working with Arduino so basically this line of code servo dot right rotate the servo shaft with a zero degree and then we will have to give a decent amount of delay so we will give one second of delay and then I'm going to just copy and paste this few lines of code now once we move the servo to a zero degree position then I want to move this to a 90 degree position and then I will copy and paste the code again and then I will move it to 180 degree because the position servo that we are using here in this lesson uh, move from zero degree to 180 degree so I want to move this from zero to 90 degree with one second of delay and then it will move to 180 degree so you can clearly see by your eyes that how the servo shaft moves um, with a delay of one second so let's go ahead into the tool section and make sure we have the right board selected Arduino Uno and the COM port is selected properly and let me upload the code on Arduino Uno and let's see if we can able to rotate the servo shaft and now as you can see the servo shaft moves from 0 degree to 90 degree to 180 degree and then from 180 degree it comes back to 0 degree right so that's how we can able to move the servo shaft with um, whatever degree that we want to move between 0 to 180 degree okay you can experiment and change the value um, into the right function as like I have passed 0 90 and 180 and then see if the servo motor rotates so for a few minutes I would just disconnect the servo motor and then we have to modify the code where I want to show you few more capabilities by using for loop so you then can able to see that how we can move the servo shaft from left means 0 degree to 180 degree from left to right and from right to left gradually right so you can able to see clearly how the servo motor can move so I'm going to remove the code inside the loop function and here I want to use uh, a for loop and even before I use for loop I need to define one global variable so I'm going to declare here integer variable pause that's for position because we want to rotate the position of the servo shaft and then I come back to the loop function and in the loop function I define for loop so for and then curly brackets that's the syntax of for loop I hope you remember from our previous lesson and in a for loop as I want to shift or move the servo shaft from 0 degree to 180 degree with a very small delay let's say of 15 milliseconds um, I have to say if the position means the pause variable is 0 so in the beginning it has to be 0 and then we have to say if the pause is 
less than or equals to 180 because we want to move from 0 to 180 degree then we want the position variable pause variable to be incremented by one every time so that's basically uh, move the position from 0 to 180 degree increment by one every time when the for loop executes and here I want to write servo dot write and then in the servo dot write function I will going to pass this variable pause so every time this pause variable increment it will move the servo shaft and then we want to move the servo shaft with a very small amount of delay and this delay I will keep it as a 15 milliseconds okay so this for loop basically moves the servo shaft from left means a zero degree to right that means 180 degree so I'm just going to copy this for loop and then paste it down below here okay and here I just remove this line of code and here I want to write to move the servo shaft from 180 degree to back to the zero degree right so here I'm going to test if the pause variable is equals to 180 because now we want to uh, bring this servo shaft back from 180 degree to zero degree so in the beginning it will be 180 and then we will have to test the condition if the pause position variable is greater than or equals to zero this time we have to check other way around if the position variable pause variable is greater than or equal to if if it's greater than zero or equals to zero then we want to decrement the pause variable by one every time this for loop executes right i hope this uh, for loop is pretty clear with you so this first for loop will going to increment the pause uh, variable value by one every time and this will rotate uh, the servo shaft every 15 milliseconds and this for loop basically uh, decrement the value of the pause variable by one every time when the for loop executes and it will uh, move the shaft from left means 180 degree to right to the zero degree position with a delay of 15 milliseconds so let me upload the code and see if we can able to move the servo shaft from extreme right to left and from left to right gradually with 15 milliseconds of delay so I have uploaded the code and I can able to see the servo shaft is moving from right to left means a zero degree to 180 degree and from 180 degree back to the zero degree with 15 milliseconds of time delay i hope you have found this video educational and entertaining we'll see us into the next video lesson bye bye for now